to Max Schmeling Halle here in Berlin, where I'm with Chris and Hannes from Sabaton. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to Berlin, guys. Uh, the great tour is well underway in Europe. Uh, how is it going so far? Great. I just as the tour is called. <laughs> We're about a week into the tour. Yeah. And uh, we started off in Helsinki. That was the premiere show in Hartwell Arena in, uh, just before Christmas. Uh, and I think for all of us, it's succeeded our wildest expectations, actually. I mean, the shows have been absolutely wonderful. People have been so freaking loud, you know, so it's and the places are bigger than ever. And we're having a great time. And now one week into the tour, everybody's getting warm in their clothes, band and crew. So it's really smooth running from here. So I would say it's an extremely enjoyable tour, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, well, as you said, uh, Sabaton is now bigger than ever. So you guys joined in in the uh, first part of 2010s. So do you think it was like in the plans already in the early 2000s when the band was starting to actually, you know, playing these big ass stadiums and so on? Well, it's um, it's always been a big dream of of Pat, who started the band, the bass player. Um, he, he has a, a vision which is out of this world, and he wants to put this band up there, like to conquer the world, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think he's succeeding very good with this. And I mean, I, I joined in 2012, you joined in 13, and um, that was just about when the, the band was starting to go really well, you know. Um, and uh, it's been a, like a roller coaster for these years. It's been so much fun to be a part of this family, you know. And um, yeah, it's been really cool to see the progress. Yeah. Okay, in your eye, has the success changed Sabaton in any way, or is everything just going according to plan? Well, n nothing is going to according to plan because <laughs> there are always changes, right? And that's that's the nature of this this whole thing right it, it could never be exactly paved out like you wanted it to but then uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything negative but if it's changed uh, because of the you know success no i wouldn't say so sure everything is bigger there's a big production but we're still doing exactly the same thing we've always been doing playing music and enjoying playing music and i think that's a vital part of doing what we do if we don't enjoy it and let's say we would write songs you know f f let's write a hit anybody that's tried to do that that doesn't work if you don't like it nobody else is going to like it and i think by making sure you enjoy it you stay true to the concept and the whole idea from the beginning yeah yeah and sabaton has stayed true to the concept so uh, in your mind what has been behind the great success now Great solos. <laughs> First great, and foremost. Great drum fills. <laughs> drum fills yeah. and solos. Next question. <coughs> yeah. uh, behind it, I think a clear vision. Uh, yeah. oh. A clear vision and a plan from the beginning of what you want to do. Mm. Making sure that you still enjoy it, because that's, I think, is super important. You know, that I, I, I don't think you could go up on stage faking it, if you know what I mean. I think that that shines through pretty pretty um, immediately. So yeah, having fun, keeping, uh, staying healthy, f the most boring answer ever probably. But you know, otherwise it wouldn't work. And make sure everybody's enjoying it and that the group is um, respecting each other and having a good time, creatively and personally. I, th that's a big part anyway. I think. Mm. Then I don't know the secret recipe for all the success, but. Definitely a major part. Okay, and well, you know, grant don't come for free. So uh, there's uh, also the negative sides of success. And uh, in Sabaton's case, there's there's has been um, like this weird backlash, also like negative reactions to band. So uh, has that has that affected you at all, or do you even follow it, or is it just a storm in a glass? <clears throat> I mean, it's fun. It's always nice to see good comments, but it's it's good to see bad comments as well because then you you learn from it. If there's something they don't like, you you take it in in, in consideration. yeah in consideration, and then for 
maybe next album if there's something we really fucked up on maybe we should think it through before we do it but i mean it's been like no we don't like this album we don't like that song that song sounds like that song and you sound like blah 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 so ah, fuck, fuck it everybody is doing that to different bands so i don't really care so much about it i'm not exactly sure which backlashes you mean now but i think in a sense of um negative I mean, anybody, I think it's good that people have their opinion, right? I think if you do a show and you ask, I'll ask you after tonight and ask you, what did you think? And you say, that's good. That's, for me, the worst review you can get. Then I'd rather have you say, it was the best show ever or it fucking sucked because of this and this and this. Oh, cool. Then I want to hear it because maybe you have some actually good points because you've seen the band a hundred times. And that would be very valuable for us to like, yeah, you know, this guy said this and that. And we would actually discuss that. But if it's bullshit negativity, Mm. I don't give a shit about it. And I never did because I know where I stand and I think and I know where my the rest of my band stands. So I, I don't think negative stuff really belongs in this family at all. We're a happy bunch and we like what we do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I also meant like backlash from the war. Well, the war teams they have uh, yeah. sparked some uh, oh, yeah, commentary yeah, about the band. So uh, does do those comments affect you at all? Or no, are you, like, not really. I mean, I mean, every, people have been writing history books and making movies about war themes. So why can't we just make music about it? I mean, we're we're not taking part of any side or anything. We're not religious not political in any song if you if you read the lyrics you will see that yeah and like, like Chris says I think th- that's from my experience very often the case where you see it and I get that it's overwhelming because yeah. it's a very powerful you know s- the songs are powerful the 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 whole concept is yeah, you just take a look at it it's a strong image it's very mm. strong yeah but when you start digging into it I think a lot of people do understand what's behind it Mm. And we've had many cases with that, you know. Yeah. Take the, take the Art of War, for instance, that song. Yeah. If you read the lyrics, you know, you'll understand it. And that's a good example where, uh-huh, maybe yeah. the song title doesn't mean, you know, warmongering. <laughs> no. Quite the opposite, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the team has stayed the same yeah. through all the years. Uh, uh, do you know uh, how and where or how was it decided the team would be or where the interest to war? No, it was way back before even you and me started the band. Um, it was when they released their, uh, not released their first album, but when they started writing the first album. Um, they, they wrote a bombastic song and they needed a, a lyric theme for it. And uh, I think it was uh, Pyre who said, like, why, why don't we sing about D-Day? The Normandy Beach, you know, uh, Primo Victoria, and then they're just like, yeah, yeah, let's cool, let's do that, and then it sounded and it fit so well, sort of like, okay, why don't we do the whole album about history of war? And then the first album went really good, so they thought like, oh, okay, let's do another album, and that went really well as well. So they were like, okay, I think we found a, a topic to sing about. Yeah. We, yeah, exactly, and with with the genuine interest. Yeah, exactly, because from it both, in both the Pat and Joachim are very interested in history. Of yeah, and there's so many bands singing about dragons and yeah. uh, boobs and cocaine yeah. and yeah. swords already. <laughs> yeah, and I think if we would do it, it would really be terrible, yeah. actually. Yeah. So they can sing about that, which is quite interesting, because then all of a sudden it becomes there's a there's a co- co- in a context where it's, this shit actually matters, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, about the future of Sabaton. Well, you guys already have a festival and a cruise. So, yeah. what will be next? <laughs> Playing on the moon? <laughs> no. Um, well, it's the same thing, you know. Uh, just planning and planning and doing more tours, bigger tours. Um, maybe doing a festival outside of Sweden maybe maybe doing a cruise outside of Sweden um, I don't know yeah I mean yeah. first and foremost the great tour just started mm. so that's where we are mentally yeah. right now and we, that's what we're focusing on trying to m- make that as good as possible and make sure that the people coming to see it enjoys it 
as much as we can, you know, and then we're, we're going to do that. And I mean, th this tour is going to last for a very long time yep. and it's just started. So I think we have a good two years of the great tour. Yeah. Then we'll see what happens. Okay, and uh, as you said, the uh, tour has been great so far. So, any live favorites from Great War already? Uh, I, I think I have to say the the title track. It's so bombastic live. <laughs> it's really fun to play, actually. Uh, and as a second song, it's really you can see it in the eyes of the audience when we put everything we got in there. <laughs> in there, you can see that they're like, "Okay, here we go." And that's the second song of the set, so you can just imagine what we have for the rest of the set. Yeah. Did Did you see the show in Helsinki? No. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would Attack of the Dead Man. I mean, we play how many new songs did we play? Six. Mm, yeah, six songs from the new album. Yeah. Something like that. Five or six. Which kind of says a lot about the new mm. album too. Mm. And so far, people seem to to enjoy it actually. Yeah, and people have actually been asking more from the new album. Yeah. Or like where we were already playing five, five six songs, only you know? playing the new yeah, stuff. Yeah, play yeah. the old stuff, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it, it's it's fun as you say because uh, usually when I go see bands, you know, I, I want to see older stuff, you know, old kid, you know. Um, it's like you go see Maiden. I don't want to see the new stuff, you know. Yeah. But in this case, it's the opposite. It's, it's quite interesting, actually. At least we think it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's good for everybody. No. It's fresh. Get yeah. some fresh songs into the set. Keeps us on our toes as well. Yeah. But yeah, for me, Attack of the Dead Man, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, mm. for sure. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, break a leg tonight. Will do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.